Hey guys, Mike here from Moto Mule. Today's video is mostly going to be about this guy right here. The forward reverse gearbox that I'm using on the golf cart build. I often get a lot of questions about what gearbox I'm using behind the street bike engine to power this golf cart. So this is the uh, forward reverse gearbox that I'm using behind that street bike engine. It's made by a company called RPM and their website is rpmgearboxes.com and uh, there's a guy there, Dan, that's real helpful to answer any of the questions about this kind of thing. They've got ones that go behind snowmobile engines so they're driven, you know, CVT with pulleys and belts or this style that is meant to go behind a street bike engine and so it uses a sprocket. The input shaft on this particular model accepts a countershaft sprocket from a Suzuki GSXR motorcycle. So, you know, a GSXR 1000 or a Hayabusa or something like that. This thing is designed to take that kind of power. So, that's the input. On the output side, the outputs are flanges that accept real common Porsche 930 CVs. So, in the previous video, you saw that I got all the parts to uh, put together some really long Porsche 930 CV axles. In a nutshell, what this gearbox does is takes power from the street bike engine through the chain and spins this sprocket here. So the engine spinning this sprocket spins these two output flanges. So you can see that it spins both of them. This particular unit does not have a differential at all. It's just a spool drive. So, and it also reduces the gearing for you. So the, the sprocket here and the sprocket on the engine are pretty close to the same size. This one has got a couple more teeth than the other, but it really didn't have to. Uh, this particular one has 5.4 to one reduction. So what that means is that the chain has to spin this sprocket about five and a half times before this flange that's spinning the wheel turns once. So that's how you can get away with having the sprocket on the engine about the same size as this. Because inside here, there are gears that are doing that reduction for you rather than having a small sprocket on the engine and a big sprocket on the drive. One cool thing about that is that most street bike powered buggies have a gigantic sprocket on the back. So you got that big sprocket here that hangs down. So it's the lowest thing that would possibly hit the ground if you were to bottom out. This eliminates that. Not to mention its biggest feature is that you can put it in reverse right here. So you have, you know, in one position, this spins and the wheels go forward, change the position of this here, the chain goes forward, the wheels go backwards. So with this particular engine, I'm going to have six forward gears and six reverse gears. Aside from adding your own sprocket, this is pretty much how the unit shows up when you buy one. So you got to figure out some kind of way to hold it to your frame. So uh, I went ahead and fabbed up this little cradle and basically that cradle will fit onto here and then this is what actually bolts into the frame and holds the unit in place. So it'll it pivots about this hole here and then I got a couple pinch bolts that attempt to hold it in place. So one of the things I've uh, learned in researching these gearboxes is that you've got a, a high horsepower street bike engine pushing a fairly heavy, you know, 12, 1,000, 1,200 pound buggy. So you've got uh, a lot of force going on there. And so the biggest challenge is keeping this thing still. What I've got here will position the box and then I'll do some bracing up on top with some turnbuckles that'll help hold this thing securely in place. So here's the cradle without the gearbox in it. Uh, here you can see that it pivots around this bolt down here. There's actually a bolt on each side. And then these two bolts here 
there's slots that this thing can move in, and then these are meant to clamp down and try to hold this into position. That's not gonna be enough to hold this whole thing in position, but it's just a, you know, a good start. All right, so here's what the unit looks like with the cradle that I made bolted to it. So you can kind of see it'll actually sit in the buggy more like this. And then now it'll make a little more sense that it'll pivot from here and it adjusts in these slots. So if you could picture it moving about that center of rotation, it's moving this sprocket closer to the engine. Therefore, that's the way you can adjust the chain tension. It's important to me to have adjustment in this to be able to tension the chain. This is gonna be a very short chain so it's already going to have a hard time dissipating all the heat that's going to build up in it. So I don't want any kind of tension roller or, you know, idler sprocket or anything like that to add more friction and more heat to the chain. So that's why I went through the trouble of making this cradle adjustable to put tension on the chain. Okay, so now you can see it's all mounted in here. I've got the bolts loose so that I can move it and demonstrate how it uh, can change the distance between this sprocket and the one on the engine. So there you can see it has quite a bit of adjustment. Once the gearbox is in position, you want to make sure that you line up this sprocket with the sprocket um, on the output shaft of the engine. And it's kind of cool. It comes with uh, this little bolt here and these spacers. So you got some thick spacers and then a several thin ones. So you can shift the position of this sprocket on the splines as you need. So right now I want to add one of these thin spacers on the inside to move this sprocket out just a little bit. So I'm going to put one on that side, sprocket back on, maybe, there we go. And then the other spacers, this big one, and then put this all back together. So that's how you can keep your chain, the two sprockets in alignment with each other. Okay, so now we got the chain installed. Uh, tightened up the bolts, kind of hold this in position with a decent tension on the chain. And you can kind of see how that whole situation works. One of the important things that the company RPM gearboxes will tell you is that you need to have a brace from this tap toll to this tap toll on the cast side, drive side of this gearbox. I'm guessing it's, you know, to add some extra support here. So basically what I want to do is create a bracket that comes from those two tap tolls up to here. Something that I can mount some turnbuckle, you know, make a turnbuckle with these rod ends. Something that I can adjust back and forth and this will put it you know right in line with all the tension that this is going to create and pull this can directly fight it and help hold the uh, gearbox in the right position to keep that chain tension and actually I'll make two of them one over here to this side too so that it can't introduce any kind of twist on this cast aluminum box so and I think with two turnbuckles up here Kind of like this and like this along with that cradle that's underneath this thing should be very well supported and i shouldn't have any issues with having the chain come out of adjustment aside from the chain stretching and that's just nature of the beast there and luckily everything will be adjustable that i can tension the chain after it does indeed stretch
Okay, I got this bracket made. And you can see that I've added a couple heim joints here. These two are right hand thread heim joints. And then over here on the motor mount, I've got two left hand thread heim joints. So I just need to make two turnbuckles that I could put on here and use those to adjust the chain tension and then lock it in place with these bolts down below. And I think with the two of those spread as far apart as they are, I should resist any kind of twisting that this chain might try to do on this uh, forward reverse gearbox. Okay, it looks like if I start with a piece of tube that's six and three quarter inches long, I could make this uh, turnbuckle. very pleased with how these turnbuckles turned out. I think they'll do a great job of keeping this gearbox from being able to twist. Uh, the only thing I need to do is add some kind of wrench flats to them so I can get a wrench on them and be able to snug up the jam nuts. Okay, to give myself some kind of wrench flat to uh, hold on to those turnbuckles, I'm going to use this uh, 3 quarter inch high nut and I'm just going to drill the threads out of it and slide it over that three-quarter DOM that I used to make the turnbuckle. I'll just weld it in place and that'll give me a nice spot to put a wrench on. Okay, I got the nuts drilled out and slid them over the uh, turnbuckle tubes. I'm just going to weld these in place and I have a perfect wrench flat for adjusting these turnbuckles. While I wait for the welds to cool on these turnbuckles, I'm going to go ahead and plumb in a breather filter so that the uh, gearbox can vent, don't build up any pressure inside and spit its oil out. And speaking of oil, I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with oil. RPM Gearboxes recommends this Redline Heavy. 
So it's a full synthetic gear oil. So I'll go ahead and get that put in. And uh, it only takes three quarters of a quart. So it doesn't uh, require a whole lot of oil in that thing. Okay guys, uh, hopefully you can see here that uh, I've got the oil in it. You can kind of see that it's got a uh, sight glass there so you can see the oil level. So it's full of the synthetic oil that it needs. Up there at the top of the gearbox, hopefully you can see the hose coming out. That is the air vent for the box. And follow that hose up and here's a nice filter that uh, breather filter RPM gearboxes recommends that you mount that about a foot higher than the box. So that's what we've done. And I just want to give a shout out to ProCycle.us for the uh, breather filter here. It's a uni brand and uh, I'll put a link to ProCycle's website down in the description below. They've got uh, all kinds of motorcycle stuff. They kind of specialize in dual sport motorcycles, but they can get you just about anything. All right, we are looking good. I'll give you a uh, little better view of this bracket that I made and attached to the top of the gearbox. Hopefully you can kind of see how that attaches. And I'm super excited how these uh, turnbuckles turned out. It'll make it real easy to adjust the tension on the chain. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Sky's Off-Road Design. They hooked me up with the uh, Heim joints that are on these turnbuckles. I'll put a link to their uh, website in the description below. Check them out. They've got all kinds of different off-road parts and components that they sell. All right, guys. That concludes the installation of this RPM forward reverse gearbox that I've got installed behind the Honda Blackbird engine. If you found this video useful, please share it. Share it on your own personal social media page. Share it on forums that you participate in. Forums that the members might get some valuable information out of this video. As always, if you liked this video, please press the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Hit that one twice for good measure. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, also the little bell icon. That way uh, you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. If this is the first video you've seen of this golf cart build, be sure to hit the Moto Mule icon right about down here. And uh, that'll take you to the main Moto Mule YouTube page. And there you can see I've got uh, a few playlists of different projects. Hit the playlist for this thing and check out all the videos of the build. I think this one is going to be number 10. All right, guys, we're going to end this here. I will see you in the next video.